Back when Ryzen 7 launched earlier this year, we saw a lot of press about how terrible its 1080p gaming results were compared to Intel's at the time current 7th generation lineup. With the 8th generation lineup, we haven't seen a massive performance difference, especially in 1080p gaming. So for this uh, testing here, we're going to be using an i5-7500 versus an AMD Ryzen 5 1600. These are pretty price comparable at the moment at around about 160 to 170 pounds in the UK at the time of filming. So this should be a pretty interesting test. Now the reason that I'm testing this with a 1050 Ti and not a 1080 Ti is that most of the tests that you will have seen, especially around the Ryzen launch, we're using cards like that where a lot of people, you know, a lot of people aren't going to necessarily have these cards. I've also had a lot of people asking me about whether they should buy a Ryzen chip or an Intel, you know, i5 or even the newer i3s uh, for their relatively budget build. And if they're looking at something like a 1050 Ti, I wanted to know if it really matters which one you should go with or if you should go with something like the Ryzen with where you're going to get those extra cores and potentially extra overall productivity performance over straight up gaming performance. So let's take a look. Now I was testing this with the standard suite of games. I also did throw in PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds as there are a lot of people right now looking to buy or build PCs basically purely to play that game. So I think it's a fairly relevant addition to the test. Now this PC that you'll see here is the uh, i5 system. It's the one that I used for the £600 uh, bu budget PUBG PC parts and performance video. Uh, and I've actually updated the results since then, since there's been a lot of driver updates and a lot of uh, performance patch updates that have meant that uh, some of the numbers including Battlegrounds and GTA 5 have uh, increased a good bit. For reference here are the player unknowns Battlegrounds settings that I was running at. This is obviously uh, mostly due to the fact that player unknowns Battlegrounds is relatively unoptimized at this point although as we see more updates coming out they generally are improving the performance so as we slowly get closer to the launch and likely after the launch as well hopefully uh, even sort of these systems can run at slightly higher settings while still maintaining a decent frame rate. For the likes of GTA 5 that was running on very high, uh, Dirt Rally was actually running on Ultra at 1080p as well and obviously 3D Mark Fire Strike was running at you know, standard settings uh, and Unigen Heaven was a sort of custom of uh, high normal tessellation to x anti aliasing Without further ado, let's take a look at the performance results. Starting off with 3D Mark Fire Strike, the AMD Ryzen system just pips the Intel system to the post a little bit. With Dirt Rally, it's basically tied on average and on minimums, <laughs> and also on maximums too, with the Ryzen system coming out just slightly ahead. In GTA 5, it's pretty much the same story with a couple FPS higher on the Ryzen system, and with the minimums being a little bit strange and the maximums being, again, pretty similar, or slightly favoring Intel here. With uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, there was a fairly significant lead here in the order of about 20%, although the minimums were almost identical and the maximums were pretty close too, so again, nothing that I'd really consider a huge benefit. In Unigen Heaven, again, basically the same in both minimums, maximums, and averages. So again, really pretty impressive on that front too. So as you saw, these chips are basically trading blows between games here. There was mostly a couple of FPS difference with the Ryzen chip winning in some and the Intel chip winning in some others. I was pretty impressed with the overall performance level here and the fact that there was almost no difference in the majority of the games was really pretty impressive. The notable exception here was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, which was about 9 or 10 FPS higher on the Intel chip, and this is either due to optimization for single core performance performance or just due to the variability of the game, especially considering that there is, there is sort of relatively limited optimization in this game. Depending on where you land on the map will depend a lot on, and also how many other players are nearby and stuff like that, will depend a lot on your performance. And while I did my best to sort of negate this as possible, it's still quite difficult to do unless you follow the exact same path and even then, as I said, players and the interactions that you have in certain areas will lead to, to differences in frame rates. But I did test over a good 15 minutes of gameplay per uh, chip. so. Hopefully that relatively negates that, but either way, there's uh, I, I don't expect that you're going to see a massive difference here. The other thing to mention is that the vast majority of people who are buying a 1050 Ti or something similar are going to be playing on a 60 hertz display. This means that no matter if you're running at 63 FPS average or you're running at 73 FPS average, you're going to be having basically the same playing experience. The real big difference here is the minimum numbers, and these were all pretty similar both between Ryzen and Intel anyway. 
case. So I think the 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 more uh, the bigger story here is that they are very very similar, and it really at least in terms of gaming performance doesn't seem to matter much which one you go with. Of course, with this Ryzen chip being the 1600, you can overclock it, whereas the 7500 you can't. And also do bear in mind that with the Ryzen chip you do have six cores and 12 threads, which means that you're going to have a much better productivity experience than on the quad core four thread uh, Intel chip. So just put that one in mind. With that said, those are my thoughts on this. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Or have you just picked up a Ryzen chip or have you just picked up something similar to this Intel chip? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Of course, if you want to see any more uh, results from uh, any different games, feel free to let me know in the comments down below as well. And if you have any thoughts on the, the testing or just the results for this, feel free to let me know in the comments down below as well. I do try and reply to everyone that I can and it's always nice to have a conversation with you. Speaking of conversation, if you want to join my Discord server, feel free to do so in the link in the description down below. I know Discord does have some trouble with some links from time to time, so if there is an issue with it, again, let me know in the comments down below or feel free to tweet me on Twitter at TechTomeB. If you want to support me in making these videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, then feel free to check out the Patreon link in the description down below where you can actually get some Discord rewards and all that sort of stuff. And obviously, uh, if you don't want to directly monetarily support me, but you do buy stuff on Amazon or Overclockers UK, there's some affiliate links in the description down below too. With that said, there's also going to be some other videos over here for you. And otherwise, that's that's pretty much it. So if you are still here, thank you for watching this far. Uh, feel free, if you are a new uh, person to the channel, then feel free to check out that subscribe button down there too. And otherwise, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.